Hey everyone, it's Cashew. Today's adventure brings us back into the kitchen with another episode of Cashew's Kitchen of Curiosities. And one of the things I'm going to show you truly is a curiosity for a lot of you. And I'm going to have a first. I'm going to unbox something and then I'm going to show you how to use it. And what is it? Well, stick around and you'll find out. Our adventure starts here. The unboxing I'm doing today is an electric gooseneck kettle made by Willow and Everett and it has multiple temperature presets. And you're probably wondering why would I need a gooseneck kettle and why would I need multiple temperature presets? Well, you would need a gooseneck kettle if you were pouring something that needed precision. Like say you were pouring hot water into a French press or you were pouring water over a strainer into your teacup. And you would also need one for today's demonstration but I'm going to keep that a secret. The reason you would need multiple temperature presets is because not all teas are the same. For example, you cannot use boiling water to brew green tea. If you do, it will have a bitter taste. And that's why a lot of times when people try green tea for the first time, they don't like it because they're brewing it at the same temperature you would black tea. Okay, let's unbox this and see what the kettle looks like in person. Immediately I see it's packed really well and on top are the instructions, so I'll be sure to read those before I operate it. After I remove the protective cardboard, I see on the lower left corner is the lid, which is wrapped in bubble wrap, which is great. And then you see in the middle and the upper left is the kettle itself. And on the right, also wrapped in bubble wrap, is the heating element. Setup is pretty simple. All you have to do is put the lid on, you have the kettle, has the recess for the heating element, place it on, and then hit your temperature preset button, and you're good to go. One thing I would recommend is be careful handling this. It's light, and the metal's thin, so if you were to drop it, you'd probably put a dent in it. I think it would be very unforgiving. Here are the temperature preset buttons, and they're all set in Fahrenheit. You have 180 degrees for green tea and white tea, 195 degrees for oolong tea and air press coffee, 200 degrees for black tea and French press coffee, 205 degrees for herbal tea and pour over coffee, and then lastly 212 degrees for boiling water. And next to the boiling water preset you have the on off button, and the keep warm button. Inside the kettle is nothing fancy. It does, however, have a tab that marks the maximum height for the water level. Another use for a gooseneck kettle would be to pour water into a teapot, like this Brown Betty I bought from England. Now let me show you what we're going to make with this gooseneck kettle. This is what we're going to be making today. We're going to be making Vietnamese style coffee, and I'm actually using Vietnamese coffee and if you notice in the bottom right corner, it says weasel coffee. And let me explain what that is. First of all, in Vietnam, a majority of the coffee they make is robusta beans, and those are very bitter. And so this style of coffee I'm going to show you helps offset that bitterness. Weasel coffee is also known as weasel poop coffee by some. And essentially what they do is feed weasels the coffee beans and they pass it through their system and some believe that their stomach acids release over a hundred different chemicals in the coffee and then when they pass the beans out they roast them and create this coffee. Fortunately today this coffee only has 0.03 percent weasel coffee and the rest is arabica beans so it shouldn't be as bitter. To make Vietnamese style coffee you would use this filter called a fin. Some people have called it a pin where the H is silent but most of the people I know call it a fin. And there are two types of fins that you can use. One type of filter is the screw on type where it has a piece of threaded metal inside the fin and then you tighten this on top of the coffee. And if you use this type of filter what you do is you put the coffee in first tighten this filter on top of the coffee then loosen it one half turn and what that does is allow room for the coffee to bloom when you put the initial water in. 
The other type of filter is a gravity filter, and that just sits on top of the coffee. And I'll be using this today for my demonstration because it's a little bit easier. It just sits on top of the coffee. For today's demonstration, I'm going to use a clear mug so you can see the process taking place. The first thing you'll do is add two tablespoons of sweetened condensed milk to the mug. And if you want your coffee sweeter than that, I recommend you add sugar rather than additional sweetened condensed milk. Otherwise, it'll be too cloying. Next, add three to four teaspoons of coffee and then add the filter and just press down a little bit and turn and then lift it up and it evens out the grounds. And now we boil our water. I just boiled my first pot of water in this and I'm very happy with the results. One thing I would recommend is put your coffee mug in a bowl of boiling water and that does two things. One, it loosens up the sweet and condensed milk and makes it easier to dissolve. And it also keeps your mug warm because the process of the water going through the filter is lengthy. This is where the precision of a gooseneck kettle comes in handy. Just put a tablespoon of boiling water into your fin and let it sit for 30 seconds so the coffee can bloom. I can already smell the richness of the coffee and after the coffee has bloomed for 30 seconds, go ahead and fill the fin to the top. And then we wait, and wait, and wait. As you can see, I'm not kidding, this coffee drips through the filter at a very slow pace. And be sure to keep the lid on the fin so the water stays hot. And here's the finished product. In many Vietnamese restaurants, they serve this to you with the coffee and the sweetened condensed milk separated, and then you can stir it. When the coffee has filtered through the fin, you can use the lid as a tray to place the fin on it so you don't make a mess. Okay, let's sample the finished product. That's delicious. The bitterness of the coffee is balanced by the sweetened condensed milk and it's almost like a, a caramel. I just love it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, Give it a thumbs up. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. In the description box down below, I'll have links to my Teespring, my PayPal, and my Patreon if you want to contribute to the channel. And at the end of this video, I'll have links to some of my other videos, so check them out. Until next time, everyone, this is Cashew, signing off.